Welcome to A Course in Miracles, workbook lesson 197. It can be but my gratitude I earn. So either, as in previous lesson 196, it's only myself I condemn and crucify. It's my own gratitude. It's the gratitude of self, the gratitude of God's grace that I earn. And this is a vital lesson we have to learn, especially those of us that are connected to each other consciously through the awareness in which we abide, we know the connection. It can be my gratitude I earn. Here is the second step we take to free your mind from the belief in outside forces put it against your own. There's nothing up against you. If you think the world's out to get you or life's out to get you, it's your perception of the life that you should be that's out to get you. You make attempts at kindness and forgiveness. Yet you turn them into attack again, unless you find external gratitude and lavish thanks. You need to be told you're a hero. You need hot air blown up your bum in order for you to look how much I've forgiven, look at how much I've helped, look at how much charity I've done. Oh, I've helped all these wonderful people and they're not being grateful. I'm going to take it back. Well, then you didn't give it unconditionally. Like God gives you love unconditionally and gives you his grace, his patience unconditionally. Your gifts must be received with honor, lest they be withdrawn. How many parents raise their children like this? I sacrificed myself for you. No, you didn't. You sacrifice yourself for your own self-idea, for your own identity. And so you think God's gifts are loans at best, at worst deceptions, which would cheat you of your defenses. So God's requiring you to forgive. He's actually cheating you of your, of your right to be angry, cheating you of your defense to ensure that when he strikes, he will not fail to kill because you've become vulnerable. This is how the ego thinks. This is how 98% of the world thinks. That's why we're so quick to condemn. That's why we watch the Johnny Depp and whatever her name was court case. We, we want to find wrong. We want to find someone to blame. We want to find someone to look down on, someone to vindicate, someone to absolve, make ourselves feel better. We want to comment about everybody's lives as if ours are perfect. That he who has not sinned cast the first stone. How easily are God and guilt confused by those who know not what their thoughts can do, who know not what they are. Deny your strength and weakness must become salvation. Deny your strength and weakness becomes your sense of self. And that's why you hear the spiritual bliss bunnies and religious zealot saying things like you need to be humble the meek will inherit the earth littleness this is ego we're not asking you to be proud that's sin yeah. that's pride and proud is nonsense we're asking you to be sure in your faith in your knowing realizing that you yourself have no strength but the strength you are is god's strength and that's invincible. Nothing you can't do. And what wouldn't you do if you knew God's strength and faith in you and love for you is always standing with you, behind you, through you, for your greatest good? What couldn't you do when you realized love is limitless? See yourself as bound and bars become your home. You've jailed yourself. You've become both prisoner and the prison. Nor will you leave a prison house or claim your strength until guilt and salvation are not seen as one. And freedom and salvation are perceived as joy, for freedom and salvation are the same thing, with strength beside them, to be sought and claimed and found fully recognized as thyself. And do not mistake an 
strength with aggression. Don't make a, oh, look at these aggressive, he's oh, today I should drive. That's strength. No. Strength comes from knowing. And from confidence in, in the faith which keeps showing up. The proof keeps showing up through your faith. Aggression comes from fear. Comes from weakness. Any great art martial artist knows you get confronted with the rah 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 aggressive guy shouting and screaming. Why is he doing that? He's afraid. True warriors go quiet. They smile at you. It freaks them the fuck out. Rah rah rah, and you just sit back and smile because you know you know you can. You've practiced for hours and hours and hours. You've got confidence in your skills, your abilities. The warriors go, rah, rah, rah. He's already exposed his attack before he's even attacked. And it's the same in knowingness. It's the same in our spiritual understanding of what we are. Our spirit, which is the limitlessness of God, is silent, confident, sure-footed, authentic in itself. Not to be intimidated. Nothing to fear. The true warrior knows every battle could be my last and goes into it looking for a good death. Nothing to fear. The attacker, the aggressor, wants to live. Wants to live its illusion. So it's aggressive. Urgh, fearing death. The spirit of life smiles in patience grace the grace of knowing i am and whatever appears appears i have no expectations of it i am i show up i do what i can with what's in front of me the world must thank you when you offer it release from your illusions by being yourself knowingly by being the light of god knowingly in a world that knows itself not for it takes but one to know itself, to shine light on that which is unknown. Yet your thanks belongs to you as well. Never forget that. For its release can only mirror yours as you mirror theirs. Your gratitude and theirs is only fractured selves. It's all you. Your gratitude is all your gifts require. That they be a lasting offer, offering of a thankful heart released from the illusion, released from hell forever. Is it, is it this you would undo by taking back your gifts because they weren't honored by the ones you gave it to? They didn't, they were ungrateful? No, be glad you can give because giving is the joyous extension of self. And it's when you extend self, when peace, which is when which peace, which is stillness, moves through you as it extends, it extends as you give. And as you give, it's joy. The joy is the giving, the joy in giving. You don't need anything back. The joy itself is the giving. If you give only to receive, you're not giving. You're transacting. And the minute you're transacting with love, you're out of love because now you're back in duality, you're back in illusion. Would you undo this? Would you take back the gifts you've been given of awareness, of the limitless re release you have, of the free spirit you are, just because the illusions of yourself didn't honor it? It is you who honor them by giving them, giving them fitting thanks. For it is you who have received the gifts you must have whilst you can't give them. It does not really matter if another thinks your gift's unworthy or doesn't even recognize them. Or feels they're entitled to them. In his mind, there is the part that joins with you, with yours, and thanking you. It's the part of his mind, which is the I am, joins with the part of your mind, which is the I am. One I am, one soul, one shared being in God. It doesn't matter if your gifts seem lost and ineffectual. You do your little part. It doesn't matter who's noticing. I don't have to post it on YouTube and Twitter and TikTok and whatever the hell. You just... Do it because you do it. You can help uh, someone and then take a selfie and post it. Look at me, I helped. Uh, you have doing nothing, doing it for the wrong reasons. I'm sure that person is grateful, but to you, you get no gift back. 
They are received where they are given. They are received where they are given. You give from the self to yourselves. In your gratitude, they are accepted universally in your collective dreaming mind and thankfully acknowledged by the heart of God himself in which mind you abide. Because when the son gives unto himself, he gives unto, into himself the only truth that can be given, love. And love is light. And with every bit of love we give to ourselves, the son awakens to himself and knows that he is within the, God, the heart of God himself. And would you take them back when he has gratefully accepted them? You take back God's acceptance of your gifts? Well, then don't do that to others when others don't appreciate what you've done for them. God bless every gift. God blesses every gift you give to him. And how do you give gifts to God? You give it to yourselves. Your fractured cells asleep because God wants you to awaken, wants you, the dreamer, to awaken. So when you're giving your dream characters all of God's love that you are now aware of, God blesses you for it because now you're awakening through acknowledging the love you are, by giving it to yourself. And so God blesses every gift you give him, and every gift is given him, because it can only be given to yourself. And what belongs to God must be his own. So it's God sharing God's love with that which is God. We call that the sonship, the extension of God. Yet you will never realize these gifts are sure, eternal, changeless, limitless, forever giving out, forever, never ending, extending love and adding to your never ending joy while you forgive but to attack again, while you give but to receive. Withdraw the gifts you gave and you will think that what is given you has been withdrawn. Law of reciprocity, give and you receive. Take back and you lose. But learn Learn to let forgiveness take away the idea of the sins you think you see outside yourself and you can never think the gifts of God are lent but for a little while before he snatches them away in, again in death. For death will have no meaning for you then when you are awakened to the self, which is the love of God. And with the end of this belief is fear gone forever over. Thank yourself. Thank your I am. Thank your Christ. Thank your memory of God. Thank your Holy Spirit. Same thing. For this. For he is grateful un only unto God. And he gives thanks for you unto himself. Can you now see the complete non-duality? The self, the one, the Holy Spirit that pulls you back and reminds you what you are. And God's self, God's essence is the one shared self, same essence. To everyone who lives, will Christ yet come? Not Jesus, as Christians believe. Everybody will be exposed to Jesus. And if they don't accept Jesus as the God's son, they're all going to die. Yes, of course, Jesus is God's son. Every single being is God's son. For every single being is the extension of God. And therefore, it's all God's son. My cat is God's son. Well, at least he thinks so. To everyone who lives, will Christ come? Christ, the conscious awareness of being the extension of God's awareness. For everyone must live. And what is life but awareness? And move in him. And what is he but awareness? But the awareness of awareness itself. The awareness which is peace. The awareness which is joy. His being in his father is secure because their will is one. Their gratitude to all they have created has no end for gratitude remains a part of love. Listen closely. Their gratitude to all they have created. Jimmy Mind created all these character body minds. God's son, the sonship, ever extending. What do they create? Love. That's all they're creating. The continuation of never ending love. Thanks be to you, the Holy Son of God. For as you were created, you contain all things within your 
self. The self is the Holy Son. The self is the Holy Extension. And you are still as God created you. Nor can you dim the light of your perfection. For you are light itself. Limitless light itself. In your heart, the heart of God is laid. He holds you dear because you are himself. Extension of himself. All gratitude belongs to you because of what you are. You are God's heart. You are God's kingdom. You are God's love. You are made from God's love. You are a loving thought in God's mind. Give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. They all complete you. All eight billion of us complete one Christ mind. And that Christ mind completes God's ever-extending mind. And from the self is no one left outside. So these are people that have the idea that a certain amount of us will awaken and the rest will just dissolve in the ooze of nothingness. Stuck in damnation and hell forever. You've got to be stuck with them too, if that's what you thought. Thank goodness what you think isn't true. Because it's one mind dreaming. And when one mind awakens, all dream characters dissolve in that awakened mind. When that mind awakens, there may be a portion of that mind awakened to itself. A certain amount of the characters have awoken. And while the rest are asleep, it matters not. For when the dreamer awakens, all characters dissolve into the awakened dreamer's mind. Give thanks to all, for all the countless channels which extend the self. Eight billion channels on this planet all that you do is given unto him every single person is contributing to the awakening of self so don't think that we're all going to contribute to the awakening of self by being spiritual spiritual like a sperib adam had his sperib taken out of him and eve was created and now we have a spiritual sperib running around corn leaking endless shit since the beginning of creation Spiritual is bullshit. There's only the self. The gratitude comes from self to self as the extension of self. And that's God's self, extended to all. All that you do is given unto him. All that you think can only be his thoughts, sharing with him the holy thoughts of God. The holy self, the holy son, which has dreamt us all up, has the self same thought as God's thought, love. No one's left outside. Nothing is more spiritual. Every path is a way to God. The guy on the football field is helping the dreamer awaken to self in his little glimpses of whatever. The one doing business is awakening to self. The one doing nothing, charity, the person in jail, the jail, the, the prison itself, the prisoner himself. Don't judge. Don't rank. Don't think this was high and that one's lower. It's all awakening to self. Spiritual is not spiritual. Everything is spiritual or nothing at all. Everything is spirit or nothing at all. Everything is awakening to itself appearing as what is in that which is and that which is we have named god Get earn now the gratitude you have denied yourself when you forgot the function god has given you forgive 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 nothing more to forgive but never think that he has ever ceased to offer thanks to you for being you, for showing up, for being willing to being willing and being willing to being wrong, to be willing to admit, I don't know anything. Man, I studied all of this stuff and went from real deep dualistic dogma to real deep non-duality to the realization even this shall pass. And the only way is to return to silence stillness, abide as often as I can in peace, in gratitude, and then when it's ready, it pours back out and it shares itself with all of itself. You can only share self with your, 
self, yourself, your true self with selves, fractured selves. You can only earn gratitude from your true self shared with your fractured selves. They're all coming back to you. You are that I am, that I am which is awakening to self. As each fracture of us awakens to self, the self awakens. We don't awaken, we dissolve. We disappear. Literally get go from dust to dust. And that which is, the essence, that which cannot be named, shines on forever. Be that knowingly. Be you that. In gratitude and in grace. In true humility, which is a joyous state of being. Amen. I'll stop for some questions. <laughs>